Although I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceived that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrow to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. May God bless him to read the hearing of his holy word. And I'm going to read it again in English. Do I have the English version? No, I don't. But check this out. I meant to print it. I didn't. But I'm going to check this out. What is happening here is that Paul wrote a letter to the church in Corinth to check them. To let them know that they had allowed Satan's influence to corrupt the members at the church in Corinth. Many people seem to forget that the devil is a faithful church goer. The Satan does not miss church services. His best recruiting tactics are in the church. A lot of people in society today, their deepest hurt has either come from their family and their domicile or their family in the church. Because Satan has found a way to systematically erode the connection that we have with one another through the advent of the Holy Spirit. But see, the thing about it is what Paul is doing here is something that a lot of people struggle with. A lot of people struggle with going to people with godly correction because we're not why. See, this is the issue. Paul was saying because Paul did not want to confront them in a manner to turn them off from Christ. See, a lot of us in here have been Bible beaten. A lot of us have been beaten up by the Bible. You're going to go to hell if you do that. If you wear a, a pants and you're a woman, you're going to hell. If you go to the movies, you're going to hell. If you go to prom, you're going to hell. If you dance, you're going to hell. If you drink cheap wine out of the corner store, you're going to hell. It doesn't work quite that way. See, the thing about it is people think they can negotiate their way into heaven. But see, what Paul is dealing with right here is that he actually loves these people. People get caught up on this, and Paul is really a pastor. Paul is a pastor, and he's an apostle that's planted planted this church in Corinth. Then he hears word that this church is now starting to have derisions and division in it. By him being a pastor and being charged to do what God has charged him to do, he must correct the evil that is trying to set up shop in that church. Mm -hmm. I know a while ago, about a year ago, I told you a story that I remember from back in the day when I was a kid when the pastor told it. A whole lot of people are going into church buildings, but church never entered the building. <clears throat> the story kind of goes like this. A lot of people died in this one church, and many of them went standing in the line to the gates of glory. And when they got there, they said, I've been a faithful church member. I've been a member of this church for 20 or 30 years. I've given my tithes. I've given my offerings. I've given my time. And then Michael, the angel, looked at them and said, what church are you talking about? And they said, church of blunga, blunga, blunga. We ain't going to indict nobody. <laughs> but the thing about it is, is that he turned the page again, and he looked, and he said, I need you to understand something. All of you in this line right here, Jesus has never been to that church. Mm. Mm. And you want to know why Jesus had never been to that church? Because there was nobody to call that church back to Jesus after it was introduced to him. Mm -hmm. Paul is doing that right now. That's a pastor, the ministers, the, 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 the deacons and all that are the whole people accountable of their actions in the church. See, people get it twisted. Being a church leader, you can't be timid. That's true. You can't worry about being popular. Because some of the things that were grieving Paul was that he didn't want to necessarily offend anybody. But in this passage of scripture, offending a few people got them saved. Hmm. All right. In order to get some people to see Jesus, they got to see where they're wrong. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean the kind of wrong where we become human in this. Where we're working in the Holy Spirit. I don't mean the kind of wrong where we sit back because we don't like them. Or we don't like what they represent. Or we don't like who they are. Or we don't like them. They're somebody in their family. Or we might have dated them at one time when we were younger at the church and now they broke up with us and we don't like them no more. We're not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm talking about the stuff that is in the word of God. 
See, Paul is teaching them how to be soldiers for Jesus, how to carry their bloodstained banner and wave it righteously in front of the enemy. And see, some of the things that may have crossed Paul's mind is that Paul is going to challenge these individuals to improve the integrity of their relationship with Christ. However, they know who he was. All right. Many people get caught up and not do what God has called them to do because they're trapped in what they used to be and they can't see that God has called them out of what they used to be to be right now to do what it is that God has called them to do. So you got to think Paul is still human. He's wrestling in his flesh. I got to check these people about doing heinous things that I might have enjoyed doing one time. The thing is, is enjoy. That means past tense. All right. There is nobody in here that has never had a sin. There is nobody in here that has never had, done sin. There's some people in here that just got finished sinning last night to the shower of the shade. They came home and got dressed to come to church. The thing about it is, is that everybody has seen You can't let anybody intimidate you by your past to stop you from moving forward into the future that God Ow! 
but not Judas. Judas was remorseful. He was bitter. He was angry. He was so bitter and angry and depressed that he took his own life. The first documented suicide that we can think of in the Bible. He did it because of the godly regret that he had led to a evil end. He would not accept the glory of God that all of us need to accept in order to go out and live this godly life that we're supposed to live. We have to understand too, I'm going to give you the definition of regret. Then I'm going to give you the definition of repentance. Regret is this. And I'm not going to say that I haven't clung to this definition at one time in my life. Regret is a feeling of remorse, a sense of loss, disappointment, or dissatisfaction because you got caught. <laughs> not because you did wrong. Repentance is a sense of remorse, a sense of loss, a feeling of pain because of what you have done. But you thank God that you got caught. Yeah, right. You thank God that somebody like Paul called you on it so that you can be led to know and understand that you were wrong. And God can re-enter your life. The backslide needs to be back, back up on the slide to stand back up and understand that God is waiting on you to repent. We need to understand something. Repentance is good for the soul. And Christian work is all accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. See, a whole lot of people do this thing called rationalization. This is the problem in our churches and in our world today. There, the devil will work with you to associate with you with the wrong people, to go to the wrong places, to do the wrong thing, all because of this one word called rationalization. Rationalization is that I convince you that the only way that you were going to have nice things in life, and I have to convince you that in order for you to feel like a success, is that you have to have these specific nice things in life, is that you commit sins in order to achieve these things, these baubles, these possessions, so that you can look like a shot caller to people on earth. The devil and his minions can convince you that what you did was necessary for you to drive what you drive, live what you went to live, to have what you have, to go to attack us in 
the church. And Paul was struggling with that because people don't come to church. They don't come to church for Jesus. They come to church for a show. They come to church to feel good about coming. That's the religion. They don't come to church to feel good. No matter what's going on. Sarcastic. 
Amen. Thank you.